Dave Grohl, the family man who built an entire studio inside his house so that he could actually spend more time with his family because he loved them so much, but he also was in love with his work. I'll get a call from the manager. Hey, you got an offer to play this huge gig, blah, blah, blah. And I have to ask my daughter, hey, I know this is, you know, the day after your birthday, but should I play this show or not? She's like, absolutely not. <laughs> That's the day after my birthday. Yeah. And I got to call my manager and say, Sorry. He didn't want to miss out on time with his kids, nor his wife, who he absolutely adores. He's come out and said, I, got another confession to make. I know everyone's going to be making that joke, but I feel like I have to. <laughs> the same Dave Grohl who came up with a post this morning on his Instagram, which I saw 19 minutes after it went live, and I posted straight away onto my stories with my thoughts. And then more thoughts. And then more thoughts. And now we're here because yes, I'm filming this on the same day and I had lost my voice, but now I've got it back somehow, miraculously, a lot of lemon and hot water. The reason why I care so much is that I've been a Foos fan since I was like 11 years old. I have all of their albums. I've got bought t-shirts, even when I shouldn't have even bought t-shirts. I've gone to their concerts, even by myself because I love them that much. Dave Grohl has this reputation for being a real authentic kind of dude. I've watched basically every single interview he's ever done. Like when I say huge Foo Fighters, fan, I really mean it. He's openly talked about his issues, he's not been afraid to show emotions and affection for others, including men. I've genuinely thought of him as a real good male role model for guys. When Taylor Hawkins, rest his soul, tragically passed away, Dave Grohl and the entire team were completely cut up about this and they made it no secret that they were in their grieving process. They were not afraid to cry. And the other thing which I've always admired about Dave is that he's been willing to admit fault. And when I say that, you're probably like, um, well, why aren't you glad that he spoke up about about the fact that he's having a kid outside of his marriage. Mate, you don't just slip and fall into someone, okay? The cynical, jaded side of me can't help but think that the reason that he spoke up about this now is because it was actually going to come out anyway. I mean, it's better to deal with your faults yourself, right, and then deal with the backlash. Oh wait, he can't deal with the backlash because he turned off comments. He says he's working through this with his family to get through his betrayal. Because, you know, that's what this was. There was no open arrangement. It was a monogamous marriage. And people say, oh, but rock stars always do bad stuff. You can't expect them to be wrong models. <laughs> Sweetheart, you must be new to my channel because I've talked about that all right here. Because I definitely know that rock stars have not really been held to a high standard and I've unpacked all of that. Just because someone's in a position of power doesn't mean that they can get away with treating people like dirt. And when it comes to the whole groupie situation and people saying, well, oh, of course they can't resist or any of the very many disgusting things that they've said about these groupies, go and watch this video actually, which I made all about the real lives of groupies because that's incredibly important so you can actually fully understand just how terribly people used to get treated. And actually, it's not just used to get treated because groupies still exist today, it's just that the NDAs are better. Ugh, why do people care so much that this celebrity cheated on their wife? I mean, this is their personal life. The parasocial relationship, my friend. I mean, hell, the reason that I've been able to like script and film this in the same day is because I'm very passionate about this. <laughs> this ties in really closely with my brochurism video where we've got yet another instance of a guy that is apparently a really great guy actually treating people terribly behind the scenes, but having this perfect facade to everybody else. The person that I feel most for in this situation is this child, as I spoke about on my Instagram story. The illegitimate child of a rock star who will probably have no privacy because their father, who will be limitedly involved in their life no doubt, couldn't keep it in his pants. Their life will be forever affected because of this one dude. And yes, the woman is at fault too because it's been very public knowledge for many years now that Dave is a married man with a family. And at the same time, we can absolutely recognize the fact that Dave is the one who is in the position of power here because he's the rock star with many millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions, actually. Nobody is blameless here, but I also do not want people to go tearing apart the mistress once she's inevitably found out and then people to go posting everything about her because, like I've been saying, that my main concern here is about this child that's going to get brought into this world world and who will probably have no privacy. By her actually being known and people just plastering her face everywhere, people are very scary online honestly. People turn into like almost stalkers honestly and they'll find out where she lives, they'll find out where the kid goes to school and I don't want that for this poor kid. The kid is innocent and she could just get completely left out of it. Like the woman, as much as she's in the wrong here, should actually be given privacy here for the sake of the child. I wanted to talk about this to try and humanize the situation because I know that I had a very visceral response when I found out. However, it's also really important that we recognize that these are all humans. I say all the time that humans are all flawed and for us not to put people on pedestals. The issue which I personally have with this is more about like this 
image that Dave has created of being this amazing family man and then being something else behind the scenes. You know what I mean? That's my problem here and that's the thing that I'm calling out here. So I really do just want people leaving his family alone. As we talk into this next section about Linkin Park, if you know anything about the band then you know that there's definitely going to be some mental health issues discussions actually going on and if this is too much for you I fully understand goodbye hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and if you do need support there are resources in the description box down below I don't ever get graphic in videos but we are talking about this but I just want to make sure that you're all okay very real and it's really big now on to Linkin Park you may actually know that they got a new lead singer recently called Emily Armstrong and that name might ring a bell because in the past she supported Danny Masterson who I've talked about in this video here She's recently come up with this statement. Several years ago, I was asked to support someone I considered a friend at a court appearance, and I went to one early hearing as an observer. Soon after, I realized I shouldn't have. I always tried to see the good in people, and I misjudged him. I've never spoken with him since. Unimaginable details emerged, and he was later found guilty. To say it as clearly as possible, I do not condone abuse or violence against women, and I empathize with the victims of these crimes. Now, Danny Masterson, as well as Emily, were Scientologists. And I don't know if you know much about Scientology, but it's actually one of the scariest, in my opinion, cults that actually exist in the world. It is so ridiculously powerful. And um, when you're in it, it's incredibly hard to get out without losing everything, everybody in your life. And the thing is that none of us really know everything about each other. So you may try and defend someone and then you're like, oh, wait, I didn't know that you did this, like what the hell? So you see what I mean? It's like, sadly we don't know everybody's like skeletons in everybody's closet. Personally for me, I'm gonna try and lean on the hopeful side of things. That she's recognized that what she did in the past was wrong by supporting him. She was uninformed about that at the time. There may have been some pressure from the Church of Scientology because like I said, terrifying cult. Just watch any video made by people who have left Scientology to find out just how terrifying this cult actually is. I can't say how you should feel about this with the fact that she supported someone like that in the past. Like I said, for me personally, she's cut them off, she's made her distance, she's apologized for it, she's recognized that what she did was wrong. If we are allowing people to learn, change and grow, then that should absolutely be part of this, you know what I mean? So is Emily Armstrong still part of the Church of Scientology? Well, it's unclear. She hasn't clarified yes or no. Some people are saying that because of her lyrics from her previous band, she isn't because she's also openly queer, which is something that the Church of Scientology previously especially hasn't accepted, but they've taken on the whole stance of we're just not saying anything these days about it, you know? The reason fans are so angry about this and want to know if she's actually rejected the church is because of Chester, the previous lead singer of Linkin Park, who was very open about his abuse that he suffered, about the fact that he struggled with terrible mental health. I mean, heck, Linkin Park's music has helped so many people with our own mental health struggles, with our own trauma. Definitely for me personally, as a teenager growing up, early 20s, like I definitely uh, needed their music and it helped me through so many dark times in my life. The key thing is that Scientology doesn't believe in mental illness or depression. As fans will know, tragically, Chester took his own life seven years ago. So it's seen by fans as something incredibly disrespectful to do to hire someone who's actually involved with the Church of Scientology that actually don't believe in anything that he actually talked about, any of his struggles. I don't want to downplay how big of a deal it is for someone to cut ties with the Church of Scientology. They are, like I said, very powerful, very scary, very manipulative people. Say if your family members are part of the church, when you leave, you can never speak to them again. So yes, it is a huge deal to actually leave the Church of Scientology, but that should have actually been done before any of this was announced because the faults of the Church of Scientology are very well known, so they should have really anticipated this sort of backlash, especially given Chester's history. Chester's son has actually come out slamming the band's decision to replace Chester with Emily. He's made an entire song about it, he's spoken up very obviously about it. And the thing is that the announcement was actually made during Suicide Prevention Month. Chester's son is going to be attending the Linkin Park concert to actually, you know, get some closure and actually go there for himself. However, the thing which I really want to focus on is people have been threatening his son. People have been telling him to unalive himself. And I think that you and I can fully understand, one, 
you should never do that to anybody. And two, to the son of someone who did actually unalive themselves, disgusting, abhorrent behavior. I don't know why people think that they can do this sort of stuff. The band have every right to take their business in the direction that they want to though, right? They've been trying to figure out how to do that over the past few years and Mike Shinoda didn't know how to handle the vocals, whether he should sing Chester's part or not. He and Chester have very different vocals. Here's just a quick sample. And now listen to Chester. Chester has a very distinctive voice, a very distinctive energy, which is not easy to replace. I mean, just see what happened with Slash when he was going on his solo tour. Who did he get? Someone that sounded just like Axel. We started writing actually in 2019. The other elephant in the room is that they've been planning this for a very long time because they've actually got a new album coming out in November of this year. It takes quite a while to work on that sort of work, doesn't it? Everybody knows how much people love to just dig up people's dirt on the internet, right? Like, I'm personally not a fan of getting rid of like every bad thing you've ever done in your life because, again, we're all human, we can all change, learn, and grow. And I prefer that to having like this false facade, personally, because then, you've got a higher pedestal to fall off, especially if we all keep on thinking that everybody should adhere to this pedestal that they've created for themselves because we all expect each other to be perfect. These two issues are definitely something which should have had the foresight to be addressed. Time will tell about her relationship with the Church of Scientology. Personally for me, I don't really think it's very ethical to be involved with the Church of Scientology when you're actually dealing with a band with such a strong legacy when it comes to, you know, mental illness, mental health, and suicide, you know? Replacing a band member is not easy. No matter who they actually got to come into play, everybody would have their opinions on it, right? And plus, that much harder if a woman is coming into a rock group because seriously as much as I love rock music oh my goodness the misogyny can be rife. The Scientology link of the front runner of the band who really is seen as like the representation of the group is just something that's never gonna sit well with people. Someone who is as beloved as Chester they've got big boots to fill. His history and his struggles have to be taken into account if you're using the same band names the same songs that he was a part of and wrote everything. If they wanted to keep the members make an entirely new band and new songs that would be something completely different. It's the fact that they're still using all of the same material and all of this stuff that Chester has his like heart and soul poured into still and something that people still associate so closely with Chester. It's a bit like a how dare you stand where he stood sort of moment and I personally don't see this going away until these issues are actually addressed. Fans will always and forever be super heated about their faves. I've spoken about this many times for many years to not pedestal people and expect people to be perfect. However, I mean, heck, I'm human, I definitely still struggle with not doing that too. The core issue with what's happened with both of these stories is that choices were made which are diametrically opposed to the image presented in one case and the people in the other. Parasocial relationships will always exist, but that also doesn't give fans an excuse to be absolutely disgusting and horrible to, you know, what are just people. Personally, my real issue is when people create this false image of themselves. I think that you can actually tell that across my videos. I would rather know the mess, understand the flaws, and see people's change and growth over the years rather than people feeling like they have to create and curate this particular image because I don't think that's healthy for anybody. It's not healthy for the audience to see, it's not healthy for other people to try and you know maintain and uphold. And also whilst they're doing bad stuff in the background I don't like that. Once again I like my monsters to be obvious. I'm with Buffy on this. I like my evil like I like my men. Evil. You know, straight up, black hat, tie to the train track, soon my electro ray will destroy Metropolis bad. What do you think about this whole situation? Do you even care? Do you think that fans should have opinions on such personal matters? I'm really looking forward to continuing this discussion in the comment section down below. I will see you there. Thanks again to my patrons for supporting me. I know that a number of you said that I should just like try and rest a little bit and stop working so much, but sometimes I really have to talk about stuff, but I do appreciate the fact that people on there care so much. And an extra special thank you to my Trash Panda enablers. Birgit, Brian Homstead, Carrie Quake, Laura, Mila Gautier, Stella Sapiente, Tammy Poitras, Tim Long, Tonya Banier, Trailmix305, Violet, and my newest member, Zachary Ellaloof. Have a wonderful rest of your week, everybody, and reminder, resources are in the description box if you need them.